the coronavirus pandemic. Because I know America has begun a new era, but corona doesn't care about who's president. In fact, it's been exactly one year since we first learned that COVID-19 had reached the United States, and things have only gotten worse. Yesterday, the country set a new record for coronavirus deaths, and the CDC now predicts that half a million deaths will happen by mid-February, which is gonna make for a weird Valentine's Day. And Valentine's Day is already pretty weird. I'm supposed to buy an adult woman a teddy bear? That's creepy as hell. The point is, it's more important than ever to step up on COVID safety, which is exactly what the NBA is doing. Well, after witnessing some opposing players disregarding new league rules against unnecessary contact on game nights, the NBA is now moving team security to midcourt following games to stop the hugging and handshakes that may cause an unwanted spread of COVID-19. High fives, hugs, and handshakes, along with extended post-game conversations, are no longer allowed. Man, this is so harsh, guys. COVID won't even let you shake hands with opponents now. That's a hard habit to break because we've all been doing that since we were five years old. You know, you play a game, and then you line up and you high five the other team saying, good game. Next, they're gonna say that what? COVID won't let you eat orange slices at halftime or drive past the ice cream store because your dad says only winners deserve ice cream. But look, I get it. You gotta do what you gotta do to stop COVID. And who knows? This could even create some excitement after the game. And here it is, Harden going up for a high five. And this is it. Oh, no, he's rejected. He's rejected by a security guard named Stanley. At the same time, though, will this really make a difference? I mean, I'm all for COVID safety, but these guys have been sweating and breathing on each other for two hours already, and then they can't shake hands? It's like handing out condoms as people are leaving your orgy. Remember to be safe. Remember to be safe. That was fun, guys. Remember to be safe. Remember to be safe. That was dope. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. This just shows how COVID has turned the whole world upside down. You know, players are now getting into trouble for being nice to each other. Like, yeah, you better hold me back. I'm about to hug this <laughs> man. Yeah, I, res I respect you, asshole. I, I will hug you right now. Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. Anyway, between the pandemic and all the insanity around the presidential election, there have been all sorts of stories that we just haven't had time to talk about. But they've kind of gotten stuck in my brain and I thought, well, maybe I could unstick them by sharing them with you. For instance, here's some big news you might have missed out of Russia, AKA Mean Canada. Vladimir Putin's fiercest critic, Alexei Navalny, who was nearly poisoned to death, returning to Russia and immediately detained. A dangerous gamble for one of Vladimir Putin's most vocal critics, and he was arrested minutes after arriving in Moscow, kissing his wife goodbye. Alexei Navalny has now been detained for at least 30 days, prompting outrage around the world. Navalny nearly died last year after being poisoned with the extremely toxic chemical weapon Novichok. He fell ill on an airplane, blaming the Kremlin for the attack, something they deny. Okay, I don't know what's crazier here that this dude went back to the same country that tried to kill him, or that they arrested him when he got there. Apparently in Russia, it's a felony to not die when they poison you. Why did you do that? You make Putin look like he don't know poison, huh? Why you do that to Putin? Look, either Navalny is the bravest dude alive, or he's just really grown to love the taste of poison. I mean, I don't know, maybe poison is delicious. It's just that no one ever survives to tell us. You know, maybe it's the most delicious thing in the world. We don't know. Actually, I want, I want to try poison now. But either way, this guy has bigger balls than me. I'm not gonna lie, because I would not be going back to Russia right now. Forget the poisoning, it's the middle of winter. All Putin has to do is delay your Uber ride for five minutes and you're done. Meanwhile, in tech news, here's a story I really can't stop thinking about involving Bitcoin, the money that lives in space. Over the last few months, the value of the virtual currency has skyrocketed to insane heights, which is great for people who own it, but it'll never catch up to the market value of my Pokemon cards. That's right, people. I've been saving up these bad boys. Mom! Mom, what did you do to my Pokemon? Mom! Anyway, one of the big draws of Bitcoin is how secure it is. Unfortunately for one investor, it's turning out to be a little too secure. 
A virtual nightmare for a man with a quarter billion dollars in Bitcoin. Yes, billion. He's forgotten his password. Stefan uh, Thomas says he's been locked out of his account since 2012. Back then, it wasn't as much of a fortune because each of his 7,000 coins was worth about 10 bucks in cash. Mm. Now, going uh, the going rate, you know how much it is? It's 37 grand. What? Uh, the man has the password stored on an old hard drive, but he lost the password to that too, and his only two more tries before he gets locked out. Wow. What a feel-good story in that I feel good that it's not me. This guy can't access a quarter billion dollars because he can't remember his password. Yo, let me tell you something. For a quarter of a billion dollars, I'm hiring people to beat the shit out of me until I do remember. Don't go easy on me. <laughs> Come on, guys, I know something. 725, lowercase e, g, dash, dash, <laughs> I remember. And finally, from Colombia, an exciting setup for a brand new season of Narcos. A notorious drug lord's exotic pets are now posing an environmental disaster. Pablo Escobar's four hippos escaped after he was killed and are now taking over the marshlands in Colombia. Experts say they are breeding so fast there, there could be more than 1,500 in the next couple of years posing a danger to the people and wildlife. They are now saying the so-called cocaine hippos should be oh shot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You go shoot the cocaine hippos who were raised by Pablo Escobar. I'm just gonna stay out of the water. And I know some people are gonna be like, do you have to shoot those hippos? Why not just round them up and put them in a zoo? No. We're not gonna be taking Pablo Escobar's hippos and putting them in a zoo. Cause you know, three weeks later, they're gonna escape through a tunnel that they built out from under their cage. There's gonna be a note left behind from the hippo saying, no zookeeper alive can hold me. Yeah, you see, some people would think that the Colombian hippos are gonna sound Colombian, but hippos are from Africa, so I like to keep the jokes authentic. I gotta say though, man, over-reproduction is the most badass reason to be exterminated. When was the last time you had so much sex that the government had to step in? The good news is, there is an easier solution to this problem. Just release some meth gators to deal with the cocaine hippos. Then to deal with the meth gators, you release the molly cobras. Then to take out the molly cobras, you release the straight edge tigers. They don't do cocaine because the real thrill is being in control. Here's a question I have though. I've always wondered this. What's the deal with drug dealers and animals? Huh? It's like the higher you go up the ladder, the crazier your pet has to be. The dealer on the corner has a fish tank. The drug lord has hippos. I bet that family that invented Oxy has a T-Rex just chained up in the backyard. You guys are killers. You should have gotten more than just a fine. Ah!